Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today, I am very pleased to be able to showcase something that is completely new to me, something that until recently I had not even heard of, and that is the miniatures game Bot War. This game has come into my possession because the designer and publisher Anthony Mallet contacted me and asked whether I would be interested in reviewing it on the channel. And I have to admit, I was quite keen on the idea because this is a miniatures game that is a love letter to the 80s. As someone who grew up reading Transformers comics and watching He-Man cartoons, this is very much in my wheelhouse. Because this is a game about giant bipedal robots fighting each other, duking it out to collect energy cubes and generally assert their authority over the opposition. The story behind the creation of this game is actually pretty interesting. Anthony told me that he started his miniatures production company around three years ago and he invested something like $5 in a broken down washing machine and then he learned from the internet how to turn that washing machine into a spin caster and learned how to start making his own miniatures and then from that he developed the bot war game system and here we are with a fully formed starter set. The game already has numerous factions but this starter set introduces two of them it introduces the noble valiant force and it introduces the atlanticans this starter set also comes with all of the basic stuff you need to get started so what we're going to do in this video we're going to crack open the box we're going to take a look at the miniatures give my brief thoughts on everything you get and later on down the line we'll look at doing some playthroughs painting guides and all that good sort of stuff so the first thing to note, and I think the thing that is going to be of most interest to a lot of people, is you get two of these pouches of miniatures. They look like um, cat food pouches, but you get two sets of resin miniatures. These are the Atlanticans and you get another pouch that contains your Valiant forces. My initial reaction was a small amount of concern because a, these miniatures are resin, and resin is not my favourite material to work with, and B, there are no build instructions for the miniatures. So emptying the pouch onto the table, it is somewhat daunting. But I have already off camera assembled the Valiants, and I will be showing those in a moment. But I wanted to show you, um, just out of the bag, this is straight out of the bag, quite how clean and crisp and wonderfully made these miniatures are. They really are incredibly well done. And in most cases, what you have is a main body with legs attached, and then you just need to attach two arms and a head. And in some cases, even the head is attached already, and it's just a matter of putting the arms on. So even though there are no instructions, I was able to assemble the five Valiant miniatures in about five minutes, about one minute per miniature. They're very clean, really beautifully done. I'm incredibly impressed. So this is General Duke, the leader of the Valiants, and he's almost entirely assembled. I just haven't attached this arm yet because I thought it'd be easier to paint him with it not attached. But the assembly is basically a case of just plugging the arms in and, and then gluing them. And uh, you can see the miniatures are a decent scale. This game is advertised as being an 8mm scale. But that 8mm refers to human sized miniatures. So the robots are all much bigger than that. This one is Wolf. A scout bot. With special reconnaissance skills. We have Aegis. This miniature was just the two arms separate, but you had to glue them so that the hand on the gun met up with the wrist here, because he's holding his weapon in two hands. We have Top Star, dual wielding his laser pistols. And then we have Angel, the sharpshooter. All fantastically sculpted and all put together very quickly and easily. 
And just to give you a bit more of an idea of scale, uh, General Duke here is on a 50mm base and is about 60mm to the top of his gun. Aegis here is the smallest model in the set. He's on a 30mm base and is about 30mm to the top of his head. The starter set includes unit cards for all of the miniatures that come in the box. There are five Valiants and six Atlanticans. The cards show a piece of artwork representing the miniature. We have the name at the top. This is their power value used for building your forces. Building forces is very straightforward. It's a matter of you pick a points value, you pick miniatures up to that. If you're using multiple factions in your force, there are certain rules. Uh, there are allies that will work together and there are enemies that won't work together. And then there are some uh, factions that have an uneasy alliance. But generally, it's just a matter of picking models up to the points value. Uh, these stats down here, we have a strategy rating. And this is an interesting aspect of the game because rather than it being an I go, you go game, uh, you will have a turn play out in order of the strategy rating of the characters involved. So the higher strategy rating will go first, it will work down. Um, so it may be the case that one player will get several turns in a row or several activations of models in a row before it goes back to the other player. And that's an interesting concept. Uh, we have all of your other basic stuff. We have movement, ranged attack, uh, close combat attack and shield. This is the number of wounds. We have special abilities down here. We have a large special ability that you pay to activate, in this case Ram Attack. As I recall from uh, quickly looking through the rulebook, Ram Attack will allow you to gain an additional three inches on your movement. And if you come into base contact with an enemy and then make a close combat attack against that enemy, you get a boost. It's like a special charge. The other keywords down here, Inspiring Presence and Pure of Purpose are always on abilities and every character has a different combination of those that gives them their unique role on the battlefield. Obviously inspiring presence and pure of purpose are leadership based skills. Finally we have down here uh, the number of energy cubes that the bot will bring to your force and that's another very interesting aspect of the game. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. In addition to General Duke, you have Wolf, Angel, Top Star, and Aegis. And then for the Atlanticans, we have Stingray. Moray, Aegon, Thermal, Nebulous, and Nami, probably my favourite Atlanticum because he's got a trident and a shield. If you add up the points values, they basically come to 60 points a side. And uh, one of the interesting things about the Atlanticans is four of them have the ability um, to combine, which isn't something you can do out of the starter set by the looks of it. Certain uh, robots can combine into a larger robot. I think for this to actually activate, you need to have a fifth combiner who is the core combiner that the other, uh, the other four will connect to. And then there is a special miniature, which is like a giant Leviathan King character that will replace those miniatures on the board. So I think uh, these are in there perhaps because they're good units anyway, but also as perhaps a way of indicating a next step in building your forces. I think if you're going to build some uh, a, a larger force with the Atlanticans, it might be a good next step to buy the core combiner for this guy um, and then actually buy the big the big unit, um, but I'm not sure yet. I, I need to get more familiar with the game and the tactics and uh, the strategies in order to figure that out for myself.
Next up, we have another kitty food pouch, and this one has our accessories in. It has our special combat dice, and it has our energy cubes. So these pouches just rip along the top. Um, like so. And once you've done that, they are grip seal. So you can carry on storing stuff in the pouches afterwards. The main things of note are we have red shield dice with shields on and we have purple combat dice with hit symbols on and combat effectively is a dice off. Uh, you roll your varying dice, you compare hits to shields and uh, damage is inflicted based on the difference between the values rolled. You can do different boosting uh, techniques and special abilities that may allow you to roll the black critical dice, which is a, a more powerful dice, more likely to do damage. But it's a very straightforward combat system. Um, and a lot of the strategy is going to come from the various different skills that your units have on the board, but also how they make use of their activation pool. And this is neat. And this is where our delicious looking energy cubes come from. Do not eat the delicious energy cubes. They are not jelly. The way the energy works is that each unit on the battlefield generates a certain amount of energy cubes each turn. And those all go into a pool during your power up phase. And then you have to divvy up the power at the start of your turn before you start doing your activations. You have to figure out um, where you want to place your power cube. So you may decide you want to give uh, four here to Nami, but then that's going to mean that you may not be able to activate one of your other bots because you have no energy left, but Nami gets to do something super cool. And it's a really interesting structure because also you have those situations where you may power up a bot that gets destroyed before you have a chance to activate. So you have to consider the, um, the strategy rating of all of the bots involved and make sure that you're not putting a lot of power onto a bot that's going to get defeated before it has a chance to use them. You need to make sure that uh, you're giving the right amount of power to the different bots. You don't want to uh, activate and then realize, oh, I needed more power than I've given myself here. I can't do the cool thing I wanted to do because moving will cost you energy. Attacking will cost you energy. Shooting will cost you energy. Boosting your attacks will cost you energy and activating your special abilities like ram attack or combining will also cost you energy. So there's a lot of things that you can spend your energy on. I think finding out exactly how to balance that across uh, getting as many activations as possible on your turn whilst at the same time not leaving uh, bots not able to do the things they need to do is going to be something that uh, is the heart of the game. It's a really interesting concept. And I think combined with what appears to be a very simple rule set, it's going to provide meaty decision points without being something that becomes really bloated and cumbersome to deal with. Speaking of the rules, you of course get your rule book in the starter set as well. This is the second edition rule book. It's very thin. Uh, it is 66 pages all told. And uh, this is something that... Uh, was a bit of a delight for me because I have mentioned several times on my channel that I'm currently uh, plowing through Elder Scrolls Call to Arms and that has been quite a tiresome thing to learn. Uh, it's got so many rules and it's got three booklets uh, with rules scattered throughout them and lots of fiddly information on extra cards. Bot War is as far from that as it's possible to get. In fact, the actual rules the core rules that you need to play the game are, I think, a 10 pages. Um, you've got a double page here where it explains the stat card, as I've just explained it uh, in this video. And then you've got, let's see, so from the game turn, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages. And then we are into the super abilities 
and the extra skills that the different units have and you're into all the other stuff like classifications of models different types of infantry units all the special rules the um the stuff that isn't core the stuff that you only need to know what you need to know for your particular army for your force so you're looking at eight to ten pages of core rules for this game that is something that i enjoy i enjoy being able to pick up a rule book like this and effectively i learn to play the game in 10 minutes however it is something that is a little bit of a double-edged sword i do worry that perhaps it leans a little too far the other way into into a, a streamlined simple rule set for example when it comes to terrain the terrain involved only covers terrain that blocks line of sight and terrain that blocks movement there's there's nothing else there's no uh, difficult terrain there's no elevation rules i think some people may find that it is lacking some of the things they might expect from a miniatures game but i'm seeing it at the moment as it is purposefully kept to a a bare minimum in the core engine and then they can layer things on with the special abilities and the extra skills that your units have of course i need to actually get the game to the table play it a few times get a good feel for it to be able to comment more on that particular thing but that's my initial impression my initial impression is that i was delighted to see a a very simple streamlined rule set i did also note a couple of minor spelling mistakes um, and errors in the rules book but really minor stuff that isn't confusing the information that is being provided nothing major and it has to be uh, remembered that we are looking at an indie game here and as far as that goes the rule book as i read it was very clear and very concise and much easier to deal with than many of the other rules books that i have looked at recently I think what the designer is going for, what Anthony has gone for here, is a really accessible rule set. Something that's going to let you recreate those Saturday morning television cartoons without having to learn a huge amount of rules to do it. And I'm quite excited for that idea. Finally, the last item in the starter set uh, is something you don't see very often these days. It's a good old fashioned tape measure, a branded bot war tape measure, which I think is a very cool little addition. When I started gaming way back when, um, my first tape measure was stolen from my dad's toolbox to play uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And I still use uh, a good old fashioned pull out tape even now, I don't use measuring gauges. I don't use the bendy whippy sticks and things like that. I use a good old tape measure. I've got a whole different bunch of them. And this one's got a cool Bot War logo on it. So that's cool. I like that. It's a neat little addition. So there we have it. There is a first look at the Bot War starter set. And some of my initial impressions from opening the box, quickly assembling half of the miniatures and flicking through that rule book. And I have to say, it's a pretty good first impression. I think it shows that it is more of an indie product. But having said that, the miniatures themselves are absolutely exceptional. I think they are fantastic. They went together so well. They're so easy to build. Um, they're so crisp. Uh, all the molds are so clean. Detailing is good. The posing is good. Um, because the arms and the head just go in on pegs, you can position the heads facing whichever direction you want. You can move the arms up and down on a lot of them to get slightly different poses. Really fantastic stuff. The company that puts this game out is called Traders Galaxy. It is based in Australia, so this is a game that is most easy to get in Australia. It is available from Firestorm Games in the UK, but that at the moment is the only place that I'm aware of where you can get it in the UK. So I will include a link to Firestorm Games in the video description. I'm not affiliated with Firestorm Games. Um, it's just that's the only place I'm aware of at the moment where you can pick this up. I think from there, the starter set with the resin miniatures runs to about 70 pounds. It may be a little bit less than that. And if you want something that has that classic 80s comic book cartoon vibe, um, something that 
is reminiscent of those old toys that you used to play with on the kitchen floor, this could be something that is worth looking into in a little bit more detail. For me personally, I'm going to finish assembling the miniatures. I'm going to look at doing a playthrough. I know I've covered some of the rules here. And in fact, I've, I've covered a large chunk of the rules here in this video because there's not that many in that core rule book. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, showing a little bit more of this on the channel. I guess it's just left to say thank you to Anthony um, from Traders Galaxy for providing this copy for review. And um, that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.